Okay, this is going to be a quick introduction to Shadow Tech and the work that we are doing here investigating the human shadow. So my name is Colin E. Davis and my partner is Melissa Mari and our website is shadowtechalchemy.com and on the website you can find our book Shadow Tech which you can get for free and you can find all kinds of interviews we do bi-weekly Zoom calls where we teach shadow work and the links to those Zoom calls are there on the website. And so um, that is all available, shadowtechalchemy.com. Now, um, I'm going to drop a few terms here so that folks can maybe see uh, if they're aligned with what it is that we're doing. First of all, obviously, you have the understanding of the shadow. So that is a Jungian understanding, and we use the Jungian framework uh, as a primary basis for, for understanding the dark side of human consciousness. And, uh, and then we springboard from there. So uh, the shadow in, in the Jungian understanding is basically everything that we can't bear to face about ourselves that we shove into the unconscious and then that becomes the source of, of energy for our neurotic behavior, for our self-destructive cycles, addictions and relationship complex, uh, conflicts and all kinds of pathology. Shadow material is primal stuff. It's a lot of monkey stuff and animal stuff uh, has to do with violence and sexual impulses and control and power drives and all kinds of stuff that we don't want to accept about ourselves and we surely don't want to show to other people. So we repress it down, but then it comes out in all kinds of ways. Um, the shadow is also leftover stuff from our own upbringing and um, stuff that we're ashamed of, that we feel guilty of, and we repress that back. So that's the traditional understanding of the shadow, and um, I think that that, that that basic understanding of the shadow still needs to make it into the mainstream. I can see that it's starting to now, people are starting to talk about terms like projection, which is one of the ways in which we deal with our shadow material. We project it onto other people. We scapegoat other people. But it's still an esoteric understanding, and we are in a phase of, of, of civilizational... We are going through... Our civilization is going through a dark night of the soul right now, and all our shadow material is coming up. And it is very important that the public start to understand um, how this works and starts to take responsibility for their own shadow material, their own inner darkness. Okay, so there's the understanding just really quickly of the Jungian shadow. People might have also heard of Paul Levy and his concept of wetiko, which is a Native American term uh, which, which refers to evil spirits. But the way Paul uses the, uh, the term is to explain the viral and parasitic way in which our shadow material collectivizes and moves about through society, through populations. And so that is, I mean, Paul has a Jungian background in this. His understanding, which is, I think, very deep, and very well described is a, is a great layer to put on top of our Jungian understanding of the shadow to understand its, uh, to get a better understanding of how it looks collectively. Um, people may have heard of Eckhart Tolle's concept of the pain body. And the pain body is basically, in Tolle's understanding, it is all kinds of leftover energy from childhood and intergenerational trauma that basically um, becomes autonomous and becomes basically a psychic parasite. 
and then it is responsible for all kinds of self-destructive cycles. Addiction, self-destructive behavior of every kind. Um, and we agree with Eckhart Tolle completely, and his, his description is also another layer to put on top of Jung's understanding of the shadow. And, um, and so that's there, and that relates to our work. Um, people may have heard, uh, it's been going around lately, the Gnostic understanding of archons. Um, people may have heard of Sri Aurobindo's hostile forces. Um, people may have heard of uh, the flyers in Carl Carlos Castaneda's work. People may have heard the term psychic parasitism. Um, obviously, there is the Christian understanding of the devil and his counterpart Lucifer and demonic activity. And, um, and, and, and there's so many different indigenous understandings of evil spirits and jinns and all of this. So all of this is related to our work. But we understand all of these to be different layers or descriptions of the same basic tapestry of, of parasitic and entropic forces within the human psyche. And the human psyche extends out into culture. And basically culture is the macrocosmic correlate to the mind or the psyche. And so whatever is not dealt with in the mind of the individual, goes into the culture and manifests in the culture. And so what you see going on right now and everything in the culture is a direct result of people not being able to clean up their own psychic states. And so that's where we get to the understanding of doing shadow work, of, of psycho-spiritual development work, because it's not just about understanding these things, but it's about actually bringing health and equilibrium to ourselves at the, at the psycho-spiritual level. And so what we've, what we've found is that when you don't work on your darkness, when you don't work on all your repressed material, and when you busy yourself and distract yourself and project your shadow material, it, it does collectivize and it does form basically an army against you. Now, I tend to use the Jungian understanding of autonomous complexes as sort of my primary way of framing this because I like to kind of ground everything into Jungian theory. Um, and this is how Jung described things. He said that when you have a, a, a trauma, that basically it can create what he called a splinter psyche. And then this splinter psyche will have a mind of its own. And it really, I mean, all of this kind of stuff really causes us to have to, to think about, well, what is the psyche and how is it structured? And, and, and I see the psyche as an energetic and informational ecosystem. And I like Daniel Siegel's understanding of the psyche of an embodied and relational field of energy and information. In other words, it's within and throughout your body, and it extends out to other people. And as it extends out, when it goes beyond the reach of, of physicality, then it takes up a symbolic nature that we call culture. So, anyhow, this, this, this understanding of the shadow and all of that, it has to be, we have to, we have to do something about it. <laughs> and once you realize that everything destructive going on that's pathological in the society points back to the shadow, of our own psyches and our neglected, um, the shadow work that we've neglected to do, or that perhaps we just didn't know we needed to do, which is really the case. 
um, now we can see, and it's kind of like in the way in which we used to think that plagues were caused by God or the devil or demonic forces, and then we found out about biological pathogens, well, then we could actually do something about it. And we changed our sanitation and hygiene practices. Well, the same thing is going on here. Now that we can understand that all of our, our craziness is, um, or it can be mitigated if we would do our own shadow work, if we would take responsibility for our own psychic garbage, then, then the responsibility falls upon us. And this is a big reason why people have a hard time embracing these understandings is because it puts responsibility on them. Once you're shown how dirty you are, <laughs> once you're shown how dirty you are and once you see for yourself, oh wow, I am a mess, but I can clean up my mess, but this is gonna be a lot of work, then a lot of people want to act like they can't see it. They want to turn away and they want to say no, no, and they want to just go back to projecting and blaming other people. So that is the difficulty in this, is that once you get into it, um, it, it puts a lot of responsibility on you. And this is another reason why people sometimes prefer to stay in an understanding of darkness as being something outside of themselves. It's an archon out there. It's a devil out there. It's uh, another group or ideology out there because then they don't have to do the work. And the last thing that I would say on that is that although the work seems daunting at first when you first get into it, it is really not. And it is ve it's very much like developing a healthy lifestyle where you are regularly exercising, engaged in some kind of sport, or um, doing weight training and cardiovascular exercise in the gym, and you're watching your food intake and you're conscious of your diet. That takes work, that takes diligence, and it takes discipline and millions of people are engaged in that kind of work and they will, would never change their life. In, they would never go back to being uh, unhealthy again. And it's the same way with doing the shadow work and taking responsibility for your own psychic parasitism, so to speak. Um, once you get the hang of it and you get going and you recognize and you've got your you got your eyeball on this domain and you can see how your own complexes are influencing your behavior and you can see how there's unconscious parts of you that are creating relational conflicts in life and you can see how those destructive thoughts and feeling cycles that are coming in and all the inner resistance that's happening is part of un, un, unhealed material and if you have some kind of a um, protocol for for doing this kind of work and 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 melissa and i share this with people every other saturday we openly basically describe how to do shadow work from top to bottom and we also uh, share this very very powerful uh, system uh, that we adapted from john ruskin he calls emotional clearing, we call emotional processing. This is a very, very powerful uh, form of emotional shadow work that, that is extremely effective. And so um, once you get going on this and you get, and, you, and you get initiated into this kind of work, then it just becomes a lifestyle and it's no big deal. And yes, it's a challenge, but everything's a challenge. And your whole life is a challenge. So anyway, I think that sums up kind of a general um, outline of what it is that we're doing. And um, stay in touch, shadowtechalchemy.com.